All right, we are going to go ahead and draw the flat hook. Um, this is from chapter two, it's number five. And you can see in the picture here, it's basically just a steel hook that you'd see on the end of a crane or a tow rope or something like that. You can see that dimensions are in millimeters and the thickness is 25 millimeters. Again, this is 2D, so we're drawing just the front face, just the shape here, this flat surface right here. When we take a look at the bottom here, here's our dimensions that we need. And they're all pretty much there. Again, like a lot of these, uh, we have enough dimensions to get the work done, but not too many. So, you know, part of the process is when you learn how to do uh, drafting, we want to evaluate the drawing and see how it kind of works and functions and then uh, go from there and using the tools that we have here in AutoCAD. When I look at this, I'm looking at, I've got a circle here, I've got another circle here, center line, coming down another center line here, another circle here, another circle here with some flat parallel lines here, and then we've got a little radius in here. Now you take a look at kind of the way this is all set up and drawn, um, all the information's on there. It's just a matter of establishing my center lines in the middle first, and then grab, you know, putting my circular geometry on first and then filling in with the straight lines after that. So let's go ahead and get started with this. The first thing we have to realize is this is metric. So we've been drawing a lot in Imperial, but we want to draw now in metric. And then again in here, when we start our drawing, we'll come down here and you can see it says no template Imperial, no template metric. So we're just going to use the, the metric side here again. Again, it gives us a blank screen to work off of, and I know that a lot of the times you're happy or familiar with uh, going through the process and saying, hey, I need, a, I need those little dots in the background for whatever reason. I don't use them. But right down here, you can put the grid on, and there's your grid. And then, again, if you want to use the snap stuff, the snap stuff's on here. Um, it's been 25 years since I've used snap grid. I just, I just draw from looking at the geometry. So taking a look at the top here, let's expand this a little bit. And you can see here we've got two parallel center lines and they are 180 millimeters apart. And uh, yep, so let's go ahead and set up our layer for doing center lines. And we'll just call it the center layer. You want to go ahead and change the color so I know that I messed up in the wrong layer, which does happen. If you watch my videos, you've seen that. Because sometimes you get into the mode of drawing and forget to maneuver between the layers. So we've got our center line layer on there. So let's go ahead and set up our center lines. Go center line layer, line mode. I'm going to turn my ortho on. I'm not a big ortho fan, but it makes it easy to draw vertical and horizontal lines when you need it. So um, the object that I'm looking at looks like it's probably, oh, I don't know, 260 maybe millimeters long. So how long does this need to be? It needs to be long enough to cover that. So uh, let's go down to 340 should be long enough. And again, same thing this way. And from here to here, we know that this is 180. So I'm going to offset that line. It's the beauty of the offset command. There's the bottom, which is right there. And then the top here is right there. And we have this all set up to do some drawing. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. Again, I'm using my middle rolling mouse button to do this. Let's work on the top first. You can see the top diameter is 45. That's what it says right there. Circle. And that is a diameter. So diameter. And you can see I'm on the wrong layer. I forgot to change, didn't I? Center layer. There we go. And you can see when I change, I have my command activated. 
but then I changed my layer and it changed with that layer change. And now I've got a circle that is the correct line. Sounds crazy, but I, I'm starting the wrong layer a lot. So that inside one, the diameter is 45. There we go. And note one more on note right here. You can read it says a radius of 50. So center radius. 50 there. and the bottom one right here you can see the radius of 62.5 so circle radius right there 62.5 that's this one and then the outside one right here is 130 So again, same process, center radius. And this was 130. So we know that this circle on the bottom wraps around to the middle here. This one's about half here. And so how do we start dividing this up? We have to start adding in these other elements. So I need a line that comes from here to here. So looking at from here down to here I need a line coming through there and it looks like that line see it doesn't really show us if you look here it says it's 125 apart but it doesn't really tell us where this tangency point here is or this tangency point here is Again, looking at the angle, looks like it's probably, I'm guessing about 60 degrees, maybe. Let's go ahead into our line mode over here. Oh, let's move this out of the way here. Back that down. And you can see I'm using nearest. I'm trying to get the line that flow from here up oh, turn ortho off. Ortho's gonna mess us up, but that's nothing. That's an angle. How do we look there? We zoom in. Oh, you see we hit we created a cord, which is bad. So I'm just using the handles now. Sliding that back in. Now, can I extend this down any further without creating a cord? I don't think so. I think that was a pretty good spot. A couple times. There is that line there. Now, if we want to take a measurement here and find out what that is, we can do that up here with angular measurement and say, well, I want to check this one and this one. And it says it's 39 degrees. So I was saying like 45, I was thinking. Or did I say 60? Maybe I said 60. So that's this one here. This other line here comes out 125 away. It's parallel. So again, let's take this line here. And we're going to go ahead and use the offset command. And the offset's 125. This side. You can see there, it caught the other side, which it should be right on. And then up over here, we've got another circle. And that's where sometimes things get a little difficult. There it comes up here. It says it's a radius of 25. And it says tangency, tangency. And it says, I don't know where this center point is. We do know it's below 180 a little bit. So I'm literally going to have to take and take that 125, uh, or excuse me, the that line coming up and then this radius here of 25 and I've got the other arc coming in here. And I gotta kind of fit it between the two and park it in there. So there again, it comes down to, how do we get that in here? Well, we know the center point's down here somewhere. And I need to get a circle that's tangent to here and tangent to here, that's 25, so that in mind let's try tangent tangent radius so on tangent to here 
I'm tangent to here. And then my radius is 25. There we go. I don't know where the center point is. The software knowing what it needs to know is all there. So that's in good shape. And then up here, right here, we have a radius of 50. And again, I got two tangency points. I can use that same circle, circle, tangent. So again, I'm specifying here and here. The radius is 50. And there. Everything looks like it's all there, ready to roll. So let's do some trimming. Let's work the back side here. Let's work the top part. So I know that this isn't here. I know this isn't here. Zooming in, I know this isn't here. And we have nothing through the middle here, so let's clean that up. Let's clean that up. And again, I'm, I'm looking back here as I'm trimming this to make sure I trim it the right way here. So there, are my hook's coming down. My hook's coming around here. Oh, undo. So I'm undoing that one. Yep. And I didn't know what happened here is I thought that we were hitting or actually missing. See that? We're off by just a hair. All I need to do Click on that endpoint, click on my grip, and just slide it over. It's contacting the line. Now I'm good. So the problem was when I trimmed that other part, it saw this whole thing and you know cut it out. So let's try that again. So I'll we'll trim there. Trim there. You see what happened there? I moved the grip down. When I move this point, it actually shifted the line down. So we should be good. Escape two times, get out of the command. Hit trim. There we go. Again, it sees those center lines. If I take the center line layer, and let's turn that off. And now let's go back in. Let's see, trim mode. Try that again. So by turning off those center lines, it let me allow it to trim without the center lines interfering. It's a shortcut just learned today. Look at that. We're all done. And again, you can come back in and turn those center lines back on. And there we go. There's our flat hook.